Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation, recorded March the 15th, 2012. In this session, Chris Miles presents his port of the Treya Physics Library to iOS. Um, hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about an open source project that I've been working on in some spare time um, called CM Treya Physics. Um, try and be fairly brief to keep this short. Um, before I begin, I'll tell you a little bit, little bit, a little bit about myself. My name's Chris Miles. I'm a freelance uh, software engineer and I'm specialising in iOS development. I've been doing that for about three years now, working for a variety of clients on lots of interesting projects. Um, a couple of those projects that have, uh, that have recently gone live and that are public, I'll just quickly show you. Um, one of them is called the Paper Baron um, for the Air Force Defence Jobs. It's a little 2D side-scrolling paper plane flying game where you glide your plane along as, as far as you can get in some sort of paper constructed um, obstacle world and it's a you know, little bit of fun. And one of the unique um, uh, things that it has is that your users are able to create uh, these airstrips at physical locations. They're effectively geolocation tied leaderboards so if you create one and then somebody else enters um, is, is nearby, they can join your airstrip and try and um, beat your score on your leaderboard, which adds a little bit of social play and sort of geolocation based challenge to the game, which is quite interesting. One of the other ones I completed uh, late last year was an augmented reality mini game for Sega um, as part of Sonic the Hedgehog's 25th anniversary promotion. Um, it's quite a, an, an interesting technical, technical challenge. Um, if you're interested in augmented reality or that sort of technologies, you can watch a talk I gave at Coca Heads last November. It's on the Coca Heads website. All right, enough of me. So today I'm going to talk about this project called CM Treya Physics. It is a Coco port of the Treya version 3 physics engine. The Treya physics engine is basically a fairly simple um, spring and particle simulator. I say simple, it's very simple compared to the likes of say um, Box2D and Chipmunk and Bullet and that sort of thing. It's really got a, a, a focused target on what it simulates. So the kinds of things that it does simulate in a 3D space are particles and springs between particles. You can also apply gravity and drag forces to the environment and you can apply uh, attraction and repulsion forces um, as well. So um, this, I, didn't, I certainly didn't invent the physics engine, so some smart guy called Treyer invented it. I think he originally wrote it in Java. Um, there was an AS3 port of that that I discovered and found the code to be quite readable, so I based my port on the AS3 port, and that uh, developer thankfully um, produced a lot of demos as well, which um, I've ported some of those across, which we can look at today. So let's have a quick look at those. There's a sneak preview. Okay, so there's a bunch of demos um, that we've got that use this um, Treya Physics engine. The first one I'll show you is probably the, the simplest, but it gives you an, an idea of what the engine actually does. So in the middle of the screen, we've got nothing but a blue dot, and that's a particle. If we move our finger around, we've got this um, circle, um, and that's set up to be an attraction force. So as we move that, our finger towards the particle, it attracts the particle, as, as you'd expect, and sort of ends up sucking it over towards it and the red line indicates a spring that's trying to drag that particle back to the origin point which is, a, which is another fixed particle. So this is probably the simplest thing we can implement. We've got um, an attraction force that tries to overcome the spring force and once it does that we can kind of pull it around um, but after a bit the spring force will overcome the attraction and drag it back to the origin. So most of the things you'll see are really based on, certainly based on that principle. So one of the very first demos I ported across was this attraction grid, which is the sort of thing where you, you move your finger around and you get this kind of um, bubble sort of out effect. It's kind of like a, a cockroach running under a rug or something like that. <laughs> you tap your finger and you can sort of bubble it out and you see the kind of bounce effect, which is, the, which is really the springs doing their work and we can get a bit of a better look of what it's actually doing under the hood if we turn on the grid mode. So we move around and we see sort of, it's really the, the grid is, is bubbling out like the texture under, under uh, as part of the image. So what's, what's actually happening here is if we look at the grid, 
each of the intersection points there are two particles configured. One particle is fixed to the, to the scene, the other particle is free to move but it's connected to the fixed particle via a spring. And wherever we put our finger, that's an, a repulsion force is set up to try and push any particles away from it. So really the, the repulsion force is, is fighting against those springs and basically we get the effect of, of these things moving around in, in that manner. We can turn off the image and just get, although on this, the scaling we get may not, that may not come up too well. So, so we'll leave that up. We'll look at one of the next ones. One of the other demos I quite like is the ability to do the cloth type physics. So same engine, similar sort of thing, but configured in a way that as we move around, we kind of get this sort of that cloth type effect. And what we've got here, we've got the grid turned on. So a similar sort of thing where at each of the intersection points, there's a particle configured. Those particles are connected to their neighbor particles via a spring and everything's you know, adjusted accordingly to make it have this kind of effect where, and, and the two top particles that are moving around are, are fixed. So as we move things around, we get this lovely little, this, this effect like that. Um, we can turn off the grid if we want and have that sort of thing. We can turn on the accelerometer and then get sort of device if we don't pull out the adapter. <laughs> we get uh, actual gravity effects, so we could um, sort of apply it over like that and kind of get a flag or something like that. So. <laughs> or you can have a look at just the grid if it wasn't clear and see what it's, what's actually as simple as that sort of thing. Um, another demo that I ported across, but it's actually, it's, it's, it's probably too simple really to show much, but it's every particle here is a particle in the physics engine. And as we move our finger around, we, a repulsion force kind of tries to push those particles away. So we get kind of get this effect. The particles don't really react between themselves or anything. So we just get a, a big, you know, big mass of particles flying about the screen. More interesting to me really, um, I forgot to say, some of these demos are implemented using OpenGL ES rendering. Some of them, however, some of them are, are implemented just using core animation. So this one's a core animation demo. So every, um, every particle is a transparent core animation layer. And it shows to me that in the later devices and iOS, later iOS versions, we can actually get, even with 500 core animation sub layers, we can still get pretty good rendering at 60 frames per second. So. <laughs> Something not to be overlooked. I'll try and find a more interesting one. This is another fairly simple one. It's again a core animation rendered demo. It's kind of like a, a rubber band type of thing where we can pull on this rubber, pull on the end and, and, and it springs back to the origin. It kind of hangs as well. So this one's made up of about eight particles um, connected to each other with springs. And again, everything's configured so that it behaves the way we want it. Um, we can kind of see those particles perhaps, or we can see the straight edges if we hold it like that or kind of shake it about, um, but we can apply sort of a, a smooth, we can smooth out the curve using a, a spline curve if we, do, if we switch that on and we get a lot more smoothing there, but that's really just in terms of drawing. So that's uh, one of the other things we can do. And we can turn on the accelerometer and have device acceleration again. Uh, one of the other demos I quite like uh, which I ported across was this web effect. So it's kind of, you know, obviously we've got a, a spider web type thing and like when we were kids we can kind of stick our finger into the web and, and fiddle around and kind of drag things and have this kind of bit of a play with the web. Although unlike when we we're, when were, were kids it doesn't really destroy the, the web. But if we do want destruction we can turn that on and then <laughs> and we can start really screwing around with, with the place and really piss off the spider when he gets back from his hunt. <laughs> so you can really make a mess of it, switch damage off and we get that. So that's kind of a fun one to play with. And again, that's all, obviously, particles at kind of the intersection points with springs between them all configured properly to get, to get the effect we want. Um, the last one of this set of demos is this clone of this wonder wall type effect where we've got this grid of images um, and as we move our finger around to sort of pan the images, they zoom out in a in a nice animated way and we've got sort of an interesting effect on how we how we can select perhaps an image in a grid or something like that. So that's again set up similar probably to the attraction grid um, but just configured to, to behave like that. 
So you, you may think, okay, that's, there's some pretty demos there and interesting effects, but does this have any real practical use in terms of actual real life apps? Um, I'd like to say it can, and I'll show you two reasons why it might. So one of those is um, an app I did for a client early last year. It's a product browser for Jeans West, and you can find these deployed in iPads in their stores. There's one just down on the corner, down the street. Um, what the creatives came up with was a, with a, trying to, a more interesting concept on how you can um, select the type of clothing that you want. You drill in on, this is my style, this is the colour I'd like, and all this sort of thing. So what we see here is these bubbles floating on the screen, and as we, we can grab bubbles with our finger and, and sort of move them around, and they'll react off each other, and we can pop them if we want. We can grab multiple ones. Some of them are fixed to certain points. We can say that we would like to look at the women's clothing and move in. So this was all, this effect was all implemented using the, the Trayer engine. What I did was basically every bubble is represented by a single particle um, and the environment set up to have gravity. So you can see the subtle gravity effect kind of tied to the accelerometer. And there's also a, a global drag. So if you flick a particle, it goes along and comes to rest. If you drag a particle close, or drag a bubble close to another one, once they get close enough together, a spring is constructed between those to try and force them apart. So if we drag a few, one or two or three or however many, springs are set up on the fly to push them apart, and we kind of get that effect as we, then if we move them all around in, in a big um, mess, springs are created and destroyed on the fly to get the effect we want. So that was a really good use of, of that engine, quite simple. Took a lot of trial and error to get the, um, to get the effect right. Another possible use for this sort of engine is with um, applying sort of subtle, phys su subtle physics to your UI kit views and, and, and layers and so on. So I've got this demo here, which is right here. So one, you know, one obvious use for this sort of, for, for physics effects in UI views is say your Apple scroll view. We all, know the, we all know the scroll view very well, so as you, you've got this view that scrolls, as you sort of flick it, it scrolls along and there's some momentum and friction applied so it comes to rest. And if we hit the top and bottom, we get the sort of rubber banding effects that we all know and love. So it's certainly possible to, these are all physics effects, it's possible to, to clone this using the Trayer engine, which is exactly what we've got here. So this is a custom view that you can scroll about it has um, particles configured behind the scenes, actually not many, just a couple, to, to apply the physics effects for applying the drag. And at the top and bottom, the rubber banding is done using springs to drag it back into place. So you might do that, you know, you might create your own if, well, if, you, if you're a bit crazy, but if you really want some custom effect or to tweak it in a, in a different way than what Apple provides. So what we do get to do is actually go in and play with that. So we could turn drag right up and we get a really sluggish view as I try and flick it. We don't get much momentum. Or we can ramp that right down, and we kind of get a view that, the scrolling that just continues on sort of forever. And we can also play with the springs themselves and ramp them right down so you get a really slow return on the rubber banding. And, you know, the, the sort of possibilities, I guess, are, are endless once you start fiddling around with physics libraries for anyone who's played with them. You can even... <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so that's something else you can play with. Okay, so you can find this little project uh, on GitHub. Um, at the address shown on the on the on the slide, all the demos that I showed, well, except the scroll view, but I'll be adding that pretty soon. All the demos uh, come with the source code, so you get an iOS app with all those demos included. You can see the full source to all of them and how they're built and how they work and all that, and play with them. And you can contact me at any of these addresses on the screen if you want to talk to me about any of the things I've shown or want me to. If you've got any interesting projects you want to talk about, and that's all. Thanks. Many thanks to Chris for presenting this month. Melbourne Cocoa Heads is brought to you by Itty Bitty Apps, but we couldn't do it without the generous sponsorship of Shine Technologies. Thanks also to RMIT for providing the venue and to our many regular attendees, speakers and volunteers. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, 
you can visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Coco on Twitter.